Hi, Mike from the Rural Montana family. I'm next to my boiler again. Guess what? Something else failed. <laughs> it's another heating season and just like last year, we got something that we need to replace this year again. But that said, I think this is our 11th season with the boiler. And uh, I think last year is the first time we actually had uh, real issues where we had to replace parts. So it's not so bad. Um, I guess after so many hours of having this run after 11 years or so, um, you can expect some stuff to break and having to be replaced. So let's get working. So this time around, we had a fire out one night and my wife was actually tending to the boiler for a couple days at the time. And so she's not so familiar with all the telltale signs uh, of something going wrong here, but there was a fire out and she got it going again. So fire out is basically the display right here starts blinking and uh, blinks FO for fire out. And so you always want to check this display here before you open the door, because once you open the door, the display will reset at that point. So before you open the door, come over here, check this real quick. And at the time it was blinking fire out, and I believe it was about 100 degrees, she said. So it wasn't totally cold at the time, still enough for heat. And uh, she got the door open, put fire within, got the fire going again, and uh, assumed everything was good. But it turned out that's not the case because the next morning we had fire out again, and the temperature on the boiler was only like 80 degrees at that point. But since she didn't know all those telltale signs of something actually being wrong, she still didn't know what's going on. And she restarted the fire again, and then, that's when I had to come out and uh, look at this thing here because fire out, yes, it happens very rare. Usually only if you either let it burn out completely, don't put any fire within, or if you have a very small load. What is a very small load? It means we're not taking enough heat away from the boiler for heating the house or whatever we're heating with it. And that's usually when the temperatures are relatively warm like if you're above freezing in the early fall or late fall, and uh, then uh, you have a very minimal load on it, but you need some heat in the house, and you could get a fire out at that point. Um, if you do get that frequently, you wanna look at your settings, and uh, hopefully you can change your settings so that doesn't happen, even under a light load at that point. So, but for us, we had a decent load. It was around freezing. So it definitely should not have went out three times in a row. And so there's a few things you can always listen for and look for. Uh, so when you open the door, you wanna hear a clunk because you wanna hear some of the solenoids go. When you close the door, you wanna hear a clunk because you wanna hear the solenoids go. If you don't hear those clunks, then there's definitely something wrong. Also, you can press the door switch as you open the door, on the bottom left, there is the door switch, and you can just press it in while the door is open, and you should actually hear air rushing into the burner chamber. If you don't, something is wrong. If you didn't hear the clunk when you pressed it, the solenoid did it, didn't open. If you hear the clunk, but there's no air rushing, the airflow is blocked completely. So let's open the back here and look into the air box. So this here is the air box. Got the blower down here, which blows air in here. And then depending on which one of those solenoids opens, you can get air with this one into the main burner chamber or with this, these two down here into the reaction chamber. And we got a smaller one and a bigger one. So depending on how much airflow is needed, these will open accordingly. 
This one here is your main thing that uh, needs to go to get the fire started, to keep your coal going. And so this one works quite a lot. And this is the one that caused our problem. So when I came in here, you can see right now, I have a nail in here. And you can already see how shiny it is here. It's been worn through pretty good. But so when I found it, it was just sitting like this. Um, and that the plunger was actually up, but the lid was down, it was disconnected. And since this works a lot, and it hammers pretty hard because that's one of the clunks you can hear. This is the one that broke. We can actually see here on the side, this piece here is missing on that side already. We can see the hole is no longer around. It's completely elongated just from working so hard. And so that caused the problem. So, and when this lid no longer lifts up, it just sits on here, blocks the airflow. If there is no airflow, then, well, the fire dies completely. So we need to replace this solenoid right here. And I did get one. Let's bring this down here. I've got this thing here. So the nail that I had in there, by the way, was just a temporary fix. They're supposed to be a cutter pin like this, but that one was worn through <laughs> and gone. So, um, I replaced it with a nail that I had laying around right here. <clears throat> so this is the new solenoid I got. And you can see it is slightly different. Um, it looks to be about the same size, uh, mounting points, everything. The connections are a little bit different. The specs are the same. Um, I took the part number of this one and cross reference to this. So this should work. And you can see this got a nice round hole, not an elongated one like the other one. And to replace it is relatively easy. We got four screws, actually I only got three. I lost one here a few days ago when I was uh, working with this lid to make it work again. Um, so I lost this, uh, <laughs> this one here. It fell down. It's down in here, I think, but I can't find it. So uh, for now I got three, I got around up a fourth one, but that's relatively easy to replace anyway. And the fourth uh, screw missing is not such a big deal. So we're loosening this. Then there's one on the bottom right, bottom left, and you can see the solenoid moved. And now, oh, gotta hold this here. So we take the little screw off the top. We wanna pull the wires off. Oops, there. Now we can just lift it up. So you can see the two bottom screws can stay in because we have slots on the solenoid. So it's just a slight off deal. So now the new one, we'll slide it on like this. We'll put this screw back in here, hopefully without losing it. There we go, got it in. So now this <coughs> will have to be adjusted that it has the correct gap when opened. We can see here this hole is a little oblong too already, so not really perfect, but it will do hopefully for another 10 years. <laughs> so let's uh, get that in here. It's a little tough to do with one hand. Also, I need to round up a cutter pin. I don't even have a cutter pin handy yet. So we'll reuse the nail for this second here, see if it fits in the not worn out hole. There we go. Okay, so basically yes, you need a cotter pin in here, not a nail. And then let's see if we can fit those back on. There we go. And it doesn't matter which one goes where. It's just the coil in there. The coil don't care. And uh, so it doesn't matter which one's positive or negative. So. And most likely I would assume this is a low voltage uh, AC anyway, so it doesn't matter whatsoever. So now, 
we need the solenoid open to see what the gap is, how high does it lift up, right? That's what we want to see. But basically, so the gap should be here, um, this gap here, uh, according to the manual, should be a half an inch. So, which that's about what it is. I, I don't know. It's not so much of a science, I think. <laughs> um, depending on what wood you burn, it kind of requires a little more or less um, air anyway and stuff. And I think this doesn't look too bad at all. So let's see, we'll open the door. Let's go up front. Open the bypass real quick. And opening the door dark in here you can see we got some wood in there and back there that's the bypass that opens here on the side where is it there that okay so now as i open the door i heard a clunk and if we go back here we'll see that was not this one it's actually these two down here so when you open the door, it starts blowing air down into the reaction chamber, not up above in the burner chamber, because we don't want to light the fire in here while you got the door open. But we want to blow some air in and uh, so to, to keep this going nicely. So here is the door switch that I talked about earlier. And you can hear the clunk probably. And that opens the big solenoid. So as I open, close this door, now I come back here, the solenoid should be open. Here we go. And this is, yeah, about a half an inch. Uh, that's not too bad. I think I'll accept that. And go around. Open the door. There was the clunk. the solenoid closed properly. It is important that it closes properly too because if it doesn't close you get air into the burner chamber and you just burn out all your coal and you might also actually overheat the boiler and it may go into a high water temperature shut off because of that. So if you need to adjust this gap here what you do is you basically you're loosening up uh, the screws and actually I still have to tighten them. Mine's all the way down. So you're just loosening up those screws and slide it up and down. Uh, let me see. Might be able to see here. The hole is about in the middle of the slot and so we can slide up a little bit if we need to to create the bigger gap. Um, <clears throat> I think we're all the way down at this point, but down here there is multiple holes actually. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's, uh, I believe, three holes there. So you can actually lower it even more if you needed to. So it's completely adjustable. So now that we got this in, that's basically all there is to do. Um, we'll get the old one out. We can put that in the metal recycling, don't need it anymore. I will have to round up. Uh, a cotter pin for here, put it in just like the one down here, no big deal. Um, don't have it handy this very second, so for now I'm just gonna close this up here. And uh, the boiler can keep going. So we should be fine, hopefully for another 10 years. <laughs> and. Um, well, there's two more solenoids, as you've seen. So these may burn out or wear out, not burn out. I mean, they're electrically functioning. Uh, they're mechanically failing. So we may have to replace those at some point as well. And like I said, the first 10 years, we really didn't have any issues with any other parts failing. But I guess after 10 years, that's when it starts, I assume, I mean, we did a couple things last year, we do, we have to do more now and uh, there's probably more to come. In any event, please subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up on every video. Thank you for watching, goodbye.